college, did you ever kind of feel like you picked the wrong field of study? And if so, what else were you considering other than archaeology? Um, I didn't really feel that way. I, I, I felt really, looking back, I feel really happy that I went to a liberal arts school where I could study lots of different things. Um, I thought about maybe going to like just a theater school, and I'm really glad I didn't do that. Yeah. Um, because I don't think I would have been exposed to history and archaeology the same way. I know I wouldn't have been. So no, I, I, I was doing a lot of theater stuff, and the archaeology degree at Tufts was very interdisciplinary. So taking history classes and classics, and you know, geology, all sorts of you know kind of related things. And so no, I felt like I was getting a good um, view of everything. But I know that's a stressful question for people. People are often freaked out by like, am I studying the right thing? And should I do something else? I think you do what you're interested in. It doesn't necessarily mean that's the thing you're going to end up doing. Deanne Gallant, I hope I said her name right, uh, said, do you ever think Hallie would ever be on one of your After the Search specials? Uh, I would love that. Uh, hmm. I have to convince her to do it. <laughs> uh, she might. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I hope that one day soon, when the kids are a little older, they'll come travel on the show a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so maybe, you never know. Cool. We'll have to ask her. Yeah, since you have small children, um, kind of doing this more adventurous, rough and tumble travel might not be as realistic with them. So would you ever consider maybe like a cruise type vacation to bring them on? So as a, a more of a controlled environment? I would not take my son on a cruise because he would jump off of the cruise ship. Oh my, no. My son is crazy. <laughs> He climbs on everything and jumps off of anything he can get on top of. But um, yeah, totally. You know, look, I, I'm not against um, a more traditional vacation, and I certainly am, am uh, into relaxing and hanging out. So I would certainly take the kids uh, and take the family to do something like a cruise. I mean, no, no reason I wouldn't do that, um, other than my son jumping off the cruise ship. <laughs> uh, no, that sounds great to me. Oh. Here's a question from Josh Gates's necklace. Hey, neck boy, when is Ryder gonna be on Expedition Unknown? I don't know, I would love that. Um, <laughs> I talk to Ryder occasionally, she is the greatest, um, and I would I would love nothing more. So hopefully one day in the future we'll, we'll make that happen. Or we'll cook up some new crazy project together. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see, uh, Daisy Carr, she writes, and this is probably a question he wants to know too, but why isn't there a Josh Gates Funko figure yet? <laughs> Why isn't there a Josh Gates Funko figure? I don't know. I have asked this question before. I don't know what need what needs what do I need to do? I don't know. I guess maybe tweet Bug Funko and or you know what you could tweet something from your account and include Funko in it and be like RT if we should have a Josh Gates Funko figure, yeah. and then that would get their attention. What do you think the number of people interested in that figure needs to be in order for them to produce it? I feel like it's a high number. They did a Twitter poll recently where they were saying, what animated show would you like to see us do Funko figures of? And that, that show I told you about Final Space, they won the poll and it was only like 75,000 votes, so. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm in support of it. I feel like we would need a real groundswell of support to make it happen. Now I have to. All right, let's do it. Um, this is a really good question uh, from a fan named uh, River Nuri. Um, they said that they're disabled and they're homebound, but they want to know how they can fil facilitate discovery, um, you know, from home with their limited um, resources. That's a really good question. Uh, I mean, I think that if you are truly homebound, um, then you're you know, then it's through the consumption of media and through books uh, and through photography uh, and other and other forms. I, you know, it, it, there are books that I have read that are as good as any trips that I've taken. You know, so yeah. um, certainly uh, there are some incredible travel writers out there who can really transport you to uh, other parts of the world. And I think in terms of if you're not completely homebound and able to able to get out to some extent, then I'm sure there are opportunities out there um, to, to be accommodated to some extent to have an adventure. Um, I'm not totally sure what those are. Uh, it's not a world that I know all that much about, but uh, it's a great question and it's an important question because I really do believe that everybody should experience uh, travel and adventure and other cultures. I think it's important. I think it's more than just fun. I think it's something that people need to be exposed to. Um, and that's something that, you know, 
maybe like a lot of people, I, I don't know enough about. So a great question, something to think on. I feel like virtual reality opens up that field a lot sure. too. For sure. Absolutely. A, a couple more simple questions. Do we have an air date for mm. Expedition Unknown yet? We don't. Or a ballpark. There's been a lot of discussion about this. So our fifth season uh, is set to air on Discovery. Uh, and it was originally going to air in January. And, uh, and that's not going to happen now. Uh, but it is going to air soon. Okay. So we're, we're working on um, uh, a couple of different dates. April has been thrown around as a, as a possibility. Cool. Um, so as soon as I know, I will shoot it up in fireworks. Cool, perfect. Soon though. And this is the last question. So you were amazing. You met every single fan who waited for you today. Um, it was a really long line. Mm -hmm. So kind of reflecting on, you know, the 10th anniversary of our fan site um, and how your fan base has grown, how does that make you feel personally to, to know that you have like this, this groundswell behind you of, of different generations of people who follow you? It, it's really weird and gratifying. Yeah. You know, it's I can't believe anybody lines up to come and say hi to me. I, I mean that, and I, and people come up to me and say, um, like people in their early twenties come to come up to me and say, I've been watching you since I was a kid, <laughs> which makes me feel so old. But also, I forget sometimes that that between the, the different series that they've been on for quite a while now, and so um, to kind of think that. There are people who the show was meaningful enough for them or fun enough for them that they tuned in over the years is just really gratifying. And then you get people who uh, come here with their kids and their kids are big fans of the show and their kids are getting excited about travel and exploration. Um, I had a few autistic fans today who came up and talked about how the show um, helped them and, uh, and with their autism. And I just, to hear something like that, it just sort of stops me in my tracks, you know? Um, it's, it's really gratifying to know that the show connects with people and, and really our whole goal in making it, and there's like an army of us who make this show. I mean, I'm just the kind of one guy in that, <laughs> in that group, but you know, we want to take people on an adventure. The whole premise is to really take them with us and go out of the world and have an adventure. And so the fact that that has meant something to people is, is really gratifying. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Enjoy thank San Diego. You for all the hard work on the fan site over the years and connecting all the many people who uh, who have tuned into the show. And, and that means a lot, really. You're welcome. Thanks yeah. for awesome. introducing me to this guy. Yeah. That's my husband, by the way. Matchmaker. Yeah, Matchmaker. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be a new, new TV things. show. <laughs> one of the many things to I do. I'm a yeah. professional. Dude, that would be something funny with Ryder. Like, oh. Matchmaker. Ooh. Oh. Patent pending. Patent pending. Mm -hmm. Patent pending. What? Anyway. You sorry. heard it here. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. He's like, what? I'm just eating candy. I'm good. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, thank you very much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Josh Gates. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good, and I'm eating a crunchy, crunchy bar. bar. This is the greatest candy bar ever made. Yes. Uh, hard to find here in the States. Made by Cadbury. And it's, um, it's this whole interview is just going to be talking about That's fine. confectionery. I got those it's, directly uh, from the UK for you. It has a honeycomb center. And there is no, uh, there is no American equivalent of this. There's no like, I don't even know what the closest thing a Butterfinger. It's not anything like a Butterfinger. No way. Anyway, the Crunchy Bar. Butterfinger doesn't even. I'm hereby endorsing the Crunchy Bar. <laughs> what can he? Can Josh just be sponsored by Crunchy Bar now, please? I'm totally available for that. <laughs> Who's I guess the I'm... least famous person with a Funko figure. Oh my God. The least famous? Uh, I didn't think about that person. Uh, they they recently came out with. Uh, oh, I know. I got one. Um, what's his name? I know, this is so hard because they come out with these Funko figures and we're sitting there like, really? I forgot his name, but it's the guy who, I would say, the guy who directed um, the most recent Ghostbusters and Bridesmaids. Oh. Paul, Paul Fig. Paul Fig. But he's relatively Paul, famous, Paul though. Paul is much famous? more famous than I am. Well, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. So, I don't know. They, they made, what, yeah. what the... The, they made Sour anyway, Patch Kids Funko figures. It's so Sour stupid. Patch Kids are more famous than Oh, my God. <laughs>